Hi traders, Lucas here and today we'll talk about the multi-assets features in Genoing. And if you want to know more about that, just take a look to my 100% free newsletter in the description. For now, generally when we do features in Genoing is we take one asset and we create several new variables that help us to understand better these variations. So that's the goal of features in Genoing. Transform our current variables in order to create new features that will focus on a specific point. So it will help the model to have better information. But generally, we have a problem. If we take only one asset, we'll not have enough trade to train a very deep model. For example, if you want to trade using deep learning and you have 1000 trades on one asset, it's already huge, but it's clearly not enough. You need much more observation. So how can we do that? We can trade new data using Monte Carlo simulation, covariance, and so on, or we can use other assets. The problem when we will use other assets or even with the synthetic data is that we will have several time series which are not on the same scale. And the method I will give you works too when you have an asset with a huge trend. For example, the Bitcoin. It begins at $1 and it ends for now at $100,000, okay? The model doesn't like the huge trend or the gap between several time series. So our goal will be to create a uniform features. And to do so, the first rule will be to never use the absolute prices or a features based on the absolute price. Let's imagine we have these five assets there. We have some features that are bounded or even better stationary. For example, if you take the correlation, the RSI or something like that, but all the features will not be bounded. And your work will be to do so. For example, there, the KMA, which is only a moving average, let's say, has a huge trend into its data because it's based on the absolute price. And for our model, if you give these five time series as input, it will be nearly impossible to learn something well because you have too many time series on different scale. And a lot of models are based on the assumption that each features come from the same distribution. So for now, we can't compare two values from different time series. So we need to transform our absolute features, let's say, into relative features. To do so, I will just create a percentage of variation. Let me explain. If I'm trading using the KMA, I will just take the KMA I want and I will create another period, which will be like the benchmark. And I will create all my percentage of variation if I have several moving averages based on this benchmark. I can take the KMA 120, for example, as benchmark, and I will create the percentage of variation from the benchmark KMA to all the different KMA I want to use. And thanks to that, I will have a relative features like on the screen. But now we still have a problem. Indeed, when we do that, we have, okay, bounded features, but each time series will not have the same bounds. For our example here with the moving average, it depends on the volatility. So if you have a very high volatility asset, the bounds will be much higher and lower. So it's much better, but we are not still able to compare these different features between them for now. The last thing we'll do is just use a basic standardization and you can use the min max scanner. You can use the standard scanner from scikit-learn. You can use the standardization method you prefer. And now, as we can see, we can compare the different observation, even if they come from different time series. And that will help us a lot because to train big models, even if you use synthetic data, you need several assets 95% of the time. So there are a lot of different ways to deal with this problem, but the one I use very frequently is this one. First, if you have absolute price-based features, you will need to make them relative, okay? So you create the same features, but using another period, or you find a way to make it relative, bonded, not stationary, obviously, even if it's better, but at least bonded. Once you have that, you standardize them, and you have your new features that you can use as input of a model. So I hope you like this video. Drop a comment if you have any question, and see you soon in the next video.